Jeff, good luck. Always, I love doing a uh, presentation right after lunch. That's, that's always the best thing. Always the best time, right? So, uh, thanks to everybody for, for showing up, not, not only for the, uh, for the conference, but especially for the uh, for, for <coughs> talk. Uh, so, uh, just, to, just to kind of start out, uh, just a little bit about me and, and, uh, and how you can get, get in touch with me. Uh, I am an American, but I come to TI. Can you use the mic, please? It's for the... For yeah, the, to record the audio in the video. record the audio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Is there any option not to use it? Uh, <laughs> is there a switch in the bottom? Okay, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll try to. Okay. Got it? Yeah, okay. perfect. Uh, okay, so uh, a little bit uh, about me and, uh, and my contact information. Probably the most consistent way to, to get in touch with me is, uh, is probably either through my, uh, through my email or, uh, or Twitter. Uh, I, I am... An American, uh, but I went to, to finish uh, all of my schooling was through public schools in Texas, so my English is not very good. I have to apologize for that in, in advance. Uh, I, I come to TI conference kind of by, by a long uh, route. I actually live in, and work in, uh, in, in Poland uh, at, at uh, the NATO training facility uh, that's, that's there. Um, people ask me if I'm a developer. I said, no, I'm not a developer. I do develop, but I'm not a developer in the sense of being uh, classically trained. Uh, but, but I do think it's, it's very important to move into this space, and I do think it's very important for jobs to get my uh, fingernails dirty in, in the technology that I manage uh, so, so that I have some credibility both with, with, uh, with my own staff and with uh, uh, other partners and, and our leadership and, uh, and everybody else. So that's uh, kind of how, how I got it. Uh, this is probably the, the part of the brief where my legal advisor would tell me that, uh, that, that I have to say uh, I, I'm going to talk about other companies, services, and people here, uh, and some resources that, that I've used or partnered with. Uh, some of those services may be free, some of them may not be free. Uh, but if I talk about it, it's not necessarily a okay. Uh, okay, so this is a, a work in a training facility. Called Joint Force Training Center. It's in, uh, in, in North Central Poland. Uh, in the city, uh, like the first time, uh, uh, it's, it's pronounced just like so. Uh, and, and we conduct collective tactical training of mostly of NATO forces, but other organizations as well. That means we, we train staff, we train organizations. We don't really do buddy boots training or individual training skills uh, training. Uh, but we do all types. A lot of it is, uh, is centered on the ISAF mission, the Afghanistan mission. Uh, but we also do courses and conferences and we do some things that, that uh, if it weren't for people that would wear a uniform, it would look very familiar or similar to what, what we're engaged in uh, right here, right now. Uh, and this uh, picture here on the lower left is uh, about, uh, I think about a year ago, two years ago, me in Afghanistan with uh, German and Polish colleagues of mine. And, uh, and so we, we engage with uh, operational theaters as well, training locations, uh, very broad mission uh, involved with partnering and preparation of forces. And, and the lower right there is, uh, is, is one of the, uh, the applications that we use uh, for Geo, geo awareness of uh, forces. And so NATO, not necessarily my center so much, but big NATO, is very much involved in the business of maps. Uh, and, and that is the it's the common language that forces use because when they come into an operation they all have their independent systems. And we maintain systems that are uh, interoperable that, uh, that that forces use when they're together. So we're, we're, we've been very much in this business for for a long time, and uh, it's interesting to me listen to the uh, to, to the briefs this this uh, this morning. And, and when I was on the elevator on the way down, I heard some guys say that uh, you know it's kind of hoping this afternoon that there'd be more technical and less PowerPoint. So I'm going to try and, uh, and and deliver. So, but, but what I want to do is just give you a high level kind of overview of, of the world that I operate in and the, the environment that I operate in. And then I'm going to try and go drop way down and talk about some specific code that we're using to solve some 
very specific uh, uh, problems. So uh, a lot of the things that you heard this morning, especially a lot of the things that you heard Jeff talk about, uh, it's happening in the military uh, uh, sphere as well. And, and there's several different uh, several different areas. And, and, and what you see this guy doing is kind of that's what I consider to be the, the pointy end of the spear. And, and, and mobile uh, is, is going to is and is going to be deployed there. But that's really the hardest place to do um, for a lot of reasons environmental reasons, security reasons, um, operating in places where the 3G coverage might not be so good, uh, or the power just to charge the device. Uh, might not be, you might not be able to take that for granted. Uh, so, doing mobile for this guy uh, is extremely important. And there's a lot of very smart people that are working on it. And a lot of, according to a lot of resources and money, that are going there trying to figure out how to do this right. Uh, but it's also very hard. Uh, and, and although this is a, a very important part of the, the total picture, uh, and, and the most important part, it's it's only a small uh, piece of, of the larger pie. And behind him is what you know, is this tale of training, of logistics, of staffing, and all this, all these normal things that would probably sound very familiar to, to any other enterprise, whether it's commercial or, or public sector. And that's where I work. That's I work at a training school. It's like I help feed, I help get that guy to, to where he needs to be. Uh, and so we have some some uh, much more kind of uh, pedestrian problems to solve, and one of the biggest ones that I've been involved in my training center when I got there two years ago, uh, we were training thousands of people uh, every year, hundreds or thousands of people every month, sometimes for very small courses, 10 or 20 people, sometimes for very large exercises, 500, 800 people. And all the registration for that was happening by very manual means. People would download it. I kid. People would download an Excel spreadsheet that had a form. They would fill this out, then they would email it as an attachment from their, you know, Yahoo.com or whatever to some of our logistics staff. And there are these ladies would take all these spreadsheets and manually consolidate them, hundreds and hundreds of rows of another spreadsheet. And then that master fed a lot of logistics functions, creating network accounts for people, scheduling hotels for people, scheduling transportation for people scheduling meals for people, uh, classroom space, all this other stuff. And then, of course, two or three days before the event, a lot of people's plans change, and so they fill out a new form, they send it in, it gets added in, and then the logistics tail tries to, to catch up. And as you can imagine, it, it was a mess. Uh, so I set about trying to, uh, to, to solve this problem, and, uh, and, and we did it, and, and we created this uh, event registration web application. Uh, it's, it's really not, on the front end, it's really not that much different from, than what you used to sign up for this conference. Uh, I would say what's probably different about it is that the sign up, the customer facing functionality of it is only about 20% of the total capability. 80% of the other 80% is the back end. It's what the staff uses to process this data uh, for, for many different ways. And when they go through reprocessing each station, uh, inputs more data or uses uses more more data. Can everybody hear me okay? Good. Am I talking too fast, too slow? Okay. Got it. Okay. Uh, so the, the platform we selected to do this is a, uh, is a is an open source, not only an application, but it's also a development framework as well. And, and I know that uh, you know coming to what I assume is a conference of, of primarily JavaScript developers is probably a tough sell. Uh, so so I, I won't really do that, but I'll just say that uh, uh, the, the platform makes made and makes a lot of sense for us uh, uh, because of, of the way that it's built. And if I was just building a, uh, a more generic kind of marketing website that just published uh, articles and data, maybe collected content or, or comments, some really simple features, this probably would not be the best platform. But when it comes to uh, building a web application, uh, it offers a, a, a tremendous amount of uh, capability out of the box, and then also a 
tremendous amount of prior work and, and modules and extensions that make it relatively easy to get a fairly complex web application up and running very quickly. And the last bullet that I have on here, Enterprise Ready, is probably, the, the, in, the, in the final analysis, the one that was most important uh, for me. Uh, there's people and organizations using this platform on a very large scale, uh, both in Europe uh, and, and in the United States. So, so there's a lot of precedence, uh, a lot of enterprise level support, SLAs that, that are available for it, so it, it, it made a lot of sense. Uh, and and the, uh, the, uh, Jeff this morning spoke about uh, this, uh, this cloud uh, type capability. Uh, I want to say it was uh, TIACS or something like that. That, that where you could have this uh, accelerator cloud services at, uh, at within within an enterprise. And when we built that, that's really what we were trying to do. Uh, I didn't really couldn't probably couldn't articulate it at the time, but I knew that I wanted uh, a really open way, open and secure way to to have my data and to consume it. And I knew that we would one day want to support this by, by mobile. And, and the way that you do this in Drupal uh, it is through a module called uh, called services. Uh, and, and I want to talk about this for a few minutes. Uh, so I'm, and, and basically what services does uh, is it it exposes uh, Drupal content in a, in a structured way. Whether it's, uh, whether it's through uh, RESTful queries, uh, that can be exposed as XML, uh, JSON, and, uh, and if, if you read uh, just a little bit about services, uh, you see it kind of gets a bad rap, I think, uh, because it's, it's got a lot of capability and a lot of functionality, but it's not very well documented. And, and I think some of the screencasts I've seen of the developers of services, they, they fully admit that. Uh, but it wasn't really, I also think it wasn't really designed uh, to, to be a complete package out of the box. Services, is, to me, it's really more of a, a development tool or a development platform. So, uh, so if you install services, it allows you to create content, to do your basic CRUD operations on content. It enables you to authenticate. Uh, there's a couple of things it allows you to do with comments, files, maybe. But that's about that's about it. Uh, the real magic of it, I think, is that it allows you, with only a little bit of coding, to expose other content and other custom uh, application type uh, information that you might have in in a, in a very standard way. And with uh, Alloy developing in, in Titanium and using uh, Backbone uh, JS as a way to synchronize. Data, it, it's really turning out to be to turn out to be a, a, a good match. Uh, so, and just some, some truth in advertising. Uh, the, the the web app part of this of, of what we've developed is is pretty is fairly mature. It's in production. We're getting hundreds of registrations for different types of events every day. It's there. The mobile side of it, eh, we're more at like phase zero, phase one of that. Okay, it's still still in development. We're still trying to figure out. Uh, uh, exactly how we're going to do it. Uh, but, but I've spent a lot of time working on the problem of how to get services to connect up to uh, uh, to, uh, to Titanium. Okay. Uh, so, so with that, uh, if, you guys, if you guys don't mind, I'll, I'll try and, uh, uh, and do some demonstrations here and see some code. If you have any questions, uh, please just, just ask. I, I ask you to kind of be patient with me. I'm, I'm, uh, falling victim to the tyranny of having a, a really narrow VGA display here, so uh, I can't, the, the Android emulator won't, you can only see like the top corner of it. Uh, so we'll, we'll run it in, in iPhone and, and, uh, and see, see how it goes. Uh, so uh, well, just, to, just, just to talk about it, so uh, one of the, uh, just, uh, one of the things that, we, uh, that, that we've kind of struggled with in, in collecting this information is that the content that we collect for event registrations, there's many different fields. Uh, some of them are plain text fields like their name, uh, their rank, their, uh, but some of it is files, uh, 
popular security clearance. Some of it is uh, um, dates. So there's many different types of, of content uh, that, that we capture. And it, it's somewhat trivial to, to build a form that, that can emulate that in, in a native interface and, and, and post it. But what if, but, but that's kind of a, 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 a tightly coupled solution. And if anything changes on your form, it could potentially break your, your app. In the best case, the data wouldn't get good save. Worst case, it, it wouldn't even, none of it would, uh, would, would get saved. Uh, so some of the, the, the things that we've used to, to put this together uh, is, uh, is, is Drupal 6, and that's kind of the, the trailing edge. And Drupal 7 is really more uh, mainstream now. And I think Drupal 8 is either in May or soon. Uh, uh, and, and the coding part that I've contributed to this is uh, a way to pull down form data through services, the structure of the form through services in a way that Titanium can then parse to, uh, to, to build the form. And I've included a link to that. And by, by the way, you know, on the first slide, I was kind of not very smart. This is a good example of it. I, I, I really just, I, I'm better at taking things that other people have done and, and using it to solve, putting it all together to solve the problem that I have. That's kind of what, I, what I've done in this case. Uh, there's a, uh, there's a, a, a really good kind of start to a forms uh, library that I think Tony uh, Lucas Savage did way back and I've used that to, to help generate the, the form uh, dynamically and in a modular way uh, with respect to the different, the different field types. Um, and then, uh, of course, the services. Uh, uh, let's see, because, so, yeah, the, the services library. Um, oh yeah, okay. So this is the uh, this is the uh, services library. So I've just built a, a common JS module that it just wraps the uh, the network calls um, in a way that that, that Drupal services uh, recognizes. So it's really. It's really kind of simple. So for this app, it's 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 done in Alloy, but I cheated a little bit. And by cheating, I mean that the UI part is, is in Alloy, but but then the uh, the, the form library and uh, and the, uh, the common JS library are all done in, in, in a separate. It's not through Backbone JS, so I'm not I'm not using the uh, uh, the, the the models of, of Alloy. So and this is just a really simple uh, a demo app uh, that I put together just for the purpose of this conference to, to just to show the, uh, uh, the capability. And uh, if you came to this session expecting a really neat design or, or, or layout or uh, user interface, you probably came to the wrong session. Uh, I don't do that very well. I've got like 15 apps. Only two of them are in production because no data would be on them. Probably pretty common. Uh, so, at any rate, we've got a, a login screen, we've got a list screen, uh, and, and this is, let's say we're creating events. Okay, we're creating an event. Um, and this is, a, this is just a, a list of some of the dummy data I've created. We're testing this. This is read only, okay, so it doesn't need authentication to pull this down. And then we, we've got a, a create form here that you can't see yet. Because uh, because we're not we're not logged okay. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, just make sure we're okay. We're going to go ahead and log in. Um, that way you can watch some of the uh, some of the console. So so we're logged in now, and what just happened? I'm running the web server locally. Is it authenticated against Drupal service? Does it send username and password? Got back a positive response and. and Package of data and part of that data was, was my email address, so, so I put that on there. Um, we've still got our list view that, that didn't change, but now we've uh, we've got a form. Okay, so when, when we successfully logged in, um, we we uh, access the, the controller on this on this uh, uh, window, and we're now displaying. So and, and let's. Uh, Let's look. Uh, so 
here's our here's our website. Uh, this is probably painful to look at for, for the actual developers that are uh, But uh, uh, here's our here's here's our list of list of events, and uh, and, and we can create this uh, we can create this through the web interface just uh, just as easily. So there it is. So we've got to run on the web, and we've also got to run in a, in a native mobile app. So let's say uh, we want to create an event. Okay, so we use that conference. Uh, let's see. And then we've got some just some arbitrary fields here. Priority, let's say we want to do it. Uh, right now, all the functionality you're seeing now is part of that forms like. And again, I'm kind of cheating because that forms library is not building the UI through uh, Apple. It's, it's doing it the old way. Uh, so it's probably something that's right for conversion to, to an Apple is, uh, is, is anybody has anybody here used Apple yet or familiar with it, kind of learning it? Uh, if if not, I just I would highly recommend uh, even if you're on on ground zero. Learning, uh, learning content. It makes it uh, a little bit steeper, I think, in the learning curve, but once you get over that, it's, it's much, much easier. Okay, so we've created an event, and now we're going to submit it, and uh, it's a response. It's a successfully created. Okay, so we go to our list, and we have the list window updated as well, so we see it there. Uh, and now let's go click on the website. So let's update the, the website, and there it is on, on the web. Uh, so let's say though our event manager decides, hey, you know what, that's not exactly the data I, I wanted to collect, I want to collect something different. Of course that never happens in uh, so, so, so what we're going to do is we're going to change what's called the content type. Content type is essentially put in a database in terms of it's the table structure. Uh, so uh, we're going to manage the fields here. And let's say, well, we need a registration. Uh, there's a bunch of customization that we can do, but I'm just accepting the default formats. So we've added a registration date. You know what? I'm going to put that above uh, start date. Uh, save it. And then uh, let's say I want to add a remarks. Hard, but it's 
kind of by design. And that is uh, building the node object. And, and by node, I mean the record. Again, the good page of the the, uh, the record that you want to say uh, is, is building that in, in the way that, that Drupal recognizes it. And more specifically, the Drupal content type that, that you built. Uh, but it's hard by design because there's many different content, there's many different fields that you can put. So these may be plain text, some of them may be a calendar, some of them may be uh, multiple choice, some of them may be a photo, some of them may be a file. There's all kind of uh, extensions to what's called CCK, the content creation. Uh, but there's also there's also some uh, some developer tools. Uh, if you do a little bit of googling. Uh, that can help you on the Drupal side to, to figure out what that structure is supposed to look like. Uh, so in other words, you test it on your website, you figure out exactly what that JSON object is supposed to look like, and then you can create a new titanium hack. And once you get the structure figured out, uh, everything else is, is fairly standard to, uh, to titanium. And, and it's, like I, like I showed down here, it's just a, it's just a simple uh, Network call that you pass to your specific uh, specific. Uh, okay, and, and building this and, and the research that I did uh, that, that I did online uh, and, and through service documentation, and everything else, and, and looking at the prior part that's been done on solving this problem. The problem that most people have with is the uh, is the, the pieces of the CRUD operation that require authentication. So if it's a privileged uh, uh, piece of content, and and the, the way that uh, the way that I solved uh, solved this is that you got to wait for that login authentication response to come back before you post the content. It sounds kind of uh, sounds kind of trivial, but uh, just again, it seems like in looking at a lot of documentation, a lot of people, that, uh, frankly, people that probably a lot smarter than me, uh, haven't, haven't figured it out yet. And, and in, in Titanium, if you use, uh, if you use good um, uh, callback practices that allow it to be asynchronous, uh, you can do that. So, so in, in other words, uh, anything that requires authentication to do on the Drupal side, it has to be fired uh, here. After, after this, once once you get the success back, you can't send the, uh, the authentication uh, uh, package, or the authentication object, and and at the same time that you send content, or send the content before that response comes back, because either way it, it will either fail or or at best be uh, best be inconsistent. Does that make sense? Anybody? No, Um, so before I leave that, let me I think I'm doing okay time-wise. Uh, there's one other thing I wanted to show you. Uh, that's, if, if you're familiar with Alloy or if you started with Alloy, one of the one of the uh, kind of the challenges I've had, in it, and this is probably more a reflection of my own shortcomings rather than the, the framework. But it's how do you manipulate uh, how do you manipulate the view that belongs to a different control? And uh, there may be a right way to do it. I just haven't figured it out yet. But uh, one technique is there's three techniques that I know of. Uh, they're kind of hackish, but one technique that Aaron Saunders recommended that Aaron recommends it that it's the right way. Is, is, is that through your through your top level controller, you can pass views from other from other controllers to simple controllers, just one technique, and you do that. Uh, so if the, if the sibling controller, you can expose the <coughs> function through exports like this, and all this does is take take an object and uh, and, and assign it. To a, uh, a, a local property in this uh, in this controller. Okay, so then in index.js, 
probably be helpful. So we've uh, so for each of our, our windows here that we're requiring, we've each given them a, we've given them each an ID. So then we can pass other child uh, views to that controller, and then that controller can manipulate that object. And that's how. Uh, that's how in this app, for example, when we create an event, it then updates a table on a view that belongs to a different uh, different. Uh, and, and the same way here. So when I log out, I don't see the form anymore. When I log in, uh, I, do, I do see the form. And it's doing that by delegating, uh, delegating the control of the, the master control index.js. Delegate those views to, to different, uh, different controls. Does that make sense? Probably help if I I'm an orange guy, I need pictures. So, any questions so far on this? I'm about to, about to jump into, uh, uh, into my next uh, next piece. So, so, we've got all this great data. We've built this event registration uh, app that is collecting thousands, hundreds of thousands of <coughs> registrations every month. Uh, and, and we realize part of it is, is helping us to part of it is helping us to, uh, uh, to do the logistics of, to support these people that are coming in. But we realize we're collecting a lot of great data on the training audience that we never really had before. So we now know what nations are sending people to train here. Uh, Know what branches of service are coming from, what skill sets they have, who's been to a training event more than once, they can contact them as a subject matter expert. Uh, so that's just, again, my line of work that's some business intelligence to collect. So how do, we, how do we make that useful for our leadership, for our examples? Uh, and, and one way, very close to having this into, into production, although for this app, production means it out of four or five devices. Those are very important devices. Uh, and, and, and we're doing it in, in much the same way that actually did for, uh, for the registration. It's interacting, with, uh, it's interacting with services. It's also authenticating because this is not data that we want to share with the, uh, with, with the whole world. Uh, so, uh, so it's authenticating, uh, and it's, it's pulling this data down. Now, now the, uh, uh, the the Drupal library that we had to write for this was a little bit more complex because we had to do some queries to, to get all this, this data from, from different uh, different events. Uh, we also use the, uh, the R graph uh, charting library. There's other JavaScript chart charting libraries that we use, and we put it in a uh, in a web view. It's wrapped with some native uh, UI uh, components. And, uh, and, and I'm actually, in some ways, I'm a little bit more proud of this app because it's a pure, uh, closely pure Alloy app that uses the backbone uh, sync method to, to reach out and get the traffic from folks. Uh, 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 tricks with this that I'll show you in the code. Uh, one is, is how you, how you uh, so, so, so right now you don't see the little quarterly thing, but uh, what's happening is it went out to the network, it actually, well, it was a great Wi-Fi here, it went out and grabbed the, uh, uh, it grabbed the data from a, uh, from a development server, uh, pulled it back here, and now it's populated. So this is a list of, uh, of past events 
each one of those table view rows also has the, the data uh, package with it, the data object uh, that's, that's specific to that event, so we're going to have to reach out again. Uh, so click on it, and now it's going to render some, uh, some, some overview statistics uh, for that event. This is just a simple, uh, simple table here, uh, along, with, uh, along with some, some charts. So these are just simple pie charts. Uh, the complexity of these charts different types to really only over by your, your skill as a uh, but, but what I did want to show you on this real quick, I hope before I have before I run out of time, is uh, is the way that it passes that data. Uh, okay, the way that it passes it, uh, it, it to the to the web. Uh, so Basically, we've, uh, we've got a function that fires after that web view is loaded and, uh, and it uses the, uh, the webview.evaljs method to, uh, to inject uh, the chart data in, in that web view. And then the JavaScript uh, that actually draws the chart is, is in the web view itself. We're just passing it, uh, we're just passing it data. Uh, the other thing that's important is if you Kind of, you can manipulate an HTML uh, element to look kind of uh, native-ish uh, by uh, by using the uh, uh, what is it, the, the, the viewport uh, meta type, and I uh, think you can restrict the user's ability to zoom or remove it. Uh, another uh, good trick that I just discovered in QA before is that uh, is if you can put a, a transparent view. Of, Top of it as well. Just blocks it from okay, so uh, real quick, here's uh, uh, again, I'm, I'm really here more to tell you about other people's work rather than my own. But if you're interested in, in this kind of thing, this this is uh, the, the resources that I use that, uh, that that help me out, uh, that help me out the most. There's a, a lot of a lot of prior art uh, uh, for this, both for using titanium with Drupal. Uh, and, and also for, for just uh, the Drupal services side of it, as, as well as the dynamic graphic with uh, 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 This guy has, has probably done the most, uh, uh, kind of the most work that, that's been posted online. I would also, this uh, Tyler Frankenstein doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't use titanium, but he does have uh, some really good tutorials on how to set up services and, and to use jQuery mobile. So you can kind of look at that and figure out how the uh, uh, how the asynchronous calls are, are, are supposed to work. Uh, okay. If you want to talk about this, look me up later, but it's cool. That's just what we're going to do. Um, lessons learned, like I said, I really encourage you to learn how to work, especially if you're a, a new uh, uh, like you. Uh, and, and also, there's some things was in Alloy that make data-centric apps much easier to develop. The backbone JS sync, uh, also the underscore JS is part of, uh, especially part of the, uh, the event registration, the first one I showed you. There's a lot of uh, data parsing that's going on behind the scenes when you have that form structure. It's kind of messy, I'm not especially proud of it, uh, but, but if, you learn, uh, if you learn all the uh, underscore JS functionality, it helps you make that a lot less messy and uh, again just this is some of the people that maybe didn't specifically help me out for this uh, this this presentation but uh, that I've definitely learned learned uh, learned a lot uh, from and guys have been uh, so in, in conclusion I just I just want to say thanks to Roy Javier and a lot of the other guys that are, that are kind of behind the scenes uh, pulling all, all this uh, together. Also, since this is being video tape, uh, I have to say thanks to my mom. Uh, <laughs> who's, who's watching my three kids uh, back at home. And I absolutely couldn't come here without, uh, without that support. So, thanks everybody for your patience. Thanks especially for those of you that stayed away from the presentation. And uh, I look forward to catching up, catching up with you uh, throughout the day. Full text story is um, uh, object-oriented job.